All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Bally at Brand. Uh, tonight we got an episode of Knights of the Crypto Table. Uh, currently, we've got uh, Crypto Coffee, myself, and uh, Motley in, in the backstage. And then uh, looking to crypto, he's going to be joining us a little bit later. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let me bring on the guys. Hey, Brian. What's up, everybody? Good to see everyone in the chat. And uh, the fuck is up, guys? What's up, Good everyone? Day. Not much, man. You know, uh, doing good as always. Nice to be earning uh, interest from Hex and oh, kind geez. of being able to relax uh, because when when the market's going down or sideways and whatnot, uh, you kind of have like this, the certainty of that. So as far as crypto goes, yeah, doing doing pretty good. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. Just making money every second you exist. <laughs> it's a good feeling. I just got back from Outback. It's delicious. Nice. <laughs> oh, nice, bloom, nice. Blooming onion. Blooming onion. Oh. Way, too, way, way too much bread, like three loaves. Yeah. The pumpernickel. Uh, but, yep, the pumpernickel bread. That awesome butter. The bone and ribeye. Uh, the chocolate thunder down under. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> do not yeah. sleep on Outback. Like it's very uh, underrated. <laughs> <laughs> that shit knocked me on the ass, on my ass afterwards. I just like woke up from a nap, just like digesting. It was bad. <laughs> no, yeah. Outback. Outback is definitely underrated. Definitely one of my uh, favorite place. One of my favorite chains, anyways, to eat at. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's an Outback commercial, guys. We got yeah, you. You're, you're welcome. Sponsored by Outback. Sponsored by all the Aussies out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think Aussies would be offended to call out back like Australian food. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It is good though. <laughs> no, no well, kangaroo. That's cool. Nothing like eating a, a eating eating a good meal like that, you know. So I know what you mean. Uh, so what are we talking yeah. about today, Brian? Pulse chain. Um, I'm... Market crashing. Biden yeah. passing all kinds of sweet tax laws in the future, maybe. Biden, man. He won't do it. Yeah. No I, I mean, I'm sure they want to. It, I just, I will be shocked beyond belief if they get anything passed into re actual regulation. You, you can't nope. tax 42% of God. people's long term gains. They won't, I don't think people are going to put up with that at all. I don't think it'll ever make it through. No, our poor, our poor hexagons in California would be paying over 50%. Can you imagine working, busting your ass? Like someone like RG3 that's like blue collar, been busting his ass with physical labor all his life. And then yeah. to hand over half your uh, your paycheck the entire year, shit's insane. It sucks, yeah. I mean, hey, I guess you get California or whatever. but <laughs> and, they, and they're talking about getting rid of like long-term capital gains and everything like that. Like just insane like you're you're li you're literally removing anyone's ability to like get out of the middle class or just get out of the rat race it's next to impossible it was already hard enough before and shit if there yeah. wasn't something like hex there's just there's no chance i mean hex rate. is literally yeah, crypto in general is the way out yeah. it's it's the way out of the nine to five way out of the rat race financial freedom that's what i wanted when i got into crypto and i think that's why a lot of us are here so I don't think the tax will actually go through. I mean, people talk about this all the time. It's just your typical new administration FUD of like, you know, the, the left wants to tax everybody, everything. And there seems to be no middle ground for like the people that, you know, are trying to do things the right way. Um, but if we don't like it, you know, we can move. And uh, I know a lot of us are planning to move, right? So it's not really like, you know, if, if you're complaining about it, just just move. Just go to a different country. I mean, if, if it's not, if you don't like living here or whatever, but uh, you know, you can also go to Puerto Rico and there's other options of you know, living in the islands and being able to come back here. So, so yeah, I don't think it's you know, I don't yeah, think it's, it's just, like uh, apocalypse it's just or whatever. It's just fud, right? It's just <laughs> it's just yeah. more fud, except uh, the markets always react to it. I mean, look at I think all I think the stock markets took a pretty heavy hit today. I think crypto's uh, pretty bloody um, today, and it just shows you how uh, fragile all this shit is. Like, uh, what what's Bitcoin, Bitcoin's getting ready to potentially dip under fifty thousand? I hope it does. I really, I really hope too. it does. I, I think I it's too. interesting how Bitcoin fell out of a parabola, as you know, Richard tweeted, but it also it's just been testing that regression band, right? If you guys follow Benjamin Cohen, like it's been testing that logarithmic regression 
it finally it tapped it like three or four times and it wasn't able to break through so now i think we're going to see a heavy correction which we haven't really had a correction greater than 25 percent in the past six months it's just been almost straight up it's been way too easy so i think when the bull market's been too easy for people it's going to have to start to test people and uh you know see what they're made of if, if their diamond hands are really all that all that they're talked up to be so um I, i'm hoping that bitcoin dips down and it seems to be giving eth a little bit of room to breathe which i yeah. thought it was really interesting that bitcoin went down and eth went up normally it goes in tandem but today eth just shot up right and then bitcoin is down pretty hard so there's a lot of uh, news and hype coming for ETH. You know, there's uh, ETH 2.0 testnet maybe, maybe coming out. Um, there's optimistic rollups coming on uh, May 5th for Uniswap V3. And there's a lot of just hype, right? So even though ETH is expensive and gas sucks, I think the rush is going to be to get in the Ethereum token itself. And, you know, the whales are still going to do whale things. So uh, we'll see. Is uh is V3 for uni, is that actually supposed to give us cheaper fees as well or just kind of like more features? I, kn I know it's got targeted liquidity and a few other uh, fun things, but is it actually supposed to give us cheaper fees as well? Uh, no idea. I know the layer two definitely is, but the uni V3 itself on layer one, uh, you've got, you know, one, from one perspective, it's like the targeted liquidity could just end up becoming a casino game where more people are trying to put liquidity in different places and yeah. driving up gas costs but from another point like what richard tweeted earlier today is that um gas is being used more efficiently in blocks and it's almost like a block size increase right so you might actually be able to get more throughput in blocks and, and fees may come down may come down um from that aspect so yeah i mean and there, and, there was, and there was news of uh, Ethereum 2.0 <laughs> getting released soon, or well, there was news the of testnet potential maybe, maybe testnet maybe uh, in mid April, in mid mid May or something, or, or like so, actually, it sounds like they're getting desperate. Is what it sounds like. I think yeah. they realized they fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I, they, I mean, well, news is going to sustain this bull market, right? New, like hype is going to sustain it until it's until it can't be anymore. Uh, T Bird wants to know when does Uni V3 launch? Um, May 5th. Oh, well, actually, isn't it already? I think it's May 5th, guys. Let me just Google that for you. <laughs> yeah, it's May 5th. Um, I was right. Yeah, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Richard saying something about Uni V3 was going to be a little bit different where like the, the code itself wasn't going to be like uh, copyable for like two years or something like that. Like they had a different different license. So they, they yeah, have a who, business who knows license, what. Yeah. Okay. But so I looked into that license and it doesn't seem like you can't copy it, right? It seems like you can't distribute it and sell it. Like a business license, business source license is a little bit different than an open source license, but not much i mean it still gives you a lot of freedom i'm not a lawyer but uh you know uh, you know that's i i think it still gives you enough freedom mm -hmm. someone thinks i'm tan i actually just have the uh auto white balance turned up too high so <laughs> artificial, I can, I can make uh, artificial streaming tan <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a spray on right now guys check it out Ooh, toasty <laughs> <laughs> nice and toasty just fried <laughs> oh uh Shout out to uh, Piston. He says, Motley, you will love this. I received a uh, fourth airdrop over oh. 18,000 US dollars. Swapped Wait, it to Hex awesome. immediately. That's wow. I, I love getting airdrops, right? Uh, I know, Piston's uh, the winner of the day. Yeah, I know uh, a coin, evidently, according to Richard, uh, that rhymes with uh, fourth, evidently. Uh, Schmapplesmore? Got Schmapplesforth, <laughs> uh, good old Schmapplesforth, uh, got a sweet airdrop today and actually sounds pretty significant, which is, which is cool, right? Um, it's kind of part of the Hex community's history. We had, a uh, we had a member back in the day that kind of was, uh, funding everyone into that project and, or yeah, I mean, I guess it is technically a project and, uh, it got a lot of people wrecked. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad. I don't know how many hexagons lost a good chunk of their hex back back then but uh i kind of glad that it made everyone kind of whole just for, with free money that's worked, incredible man it's just out. like they're the universe is just given to the hexagons it's like hey yeah. you know that you know the ample fourth fund <laughs> that you got that you fell for well here's mm -hmm. here's eighteen thousand dollars <laughs> yeah 
here's here's your second chance <laughs> it's just like you may, you might have bought some of this and didn't do so well but that's okay they're gonna print some more money you know you you decide what you want to do with it this go around Honestly, either yeah. take the proven thing or try round two with the uh, schmapple for us good luck <laughs> they're unsuspecting too like uh you know because a lot of times it's not like they're going to announce the airdrop but they just kind of happen randomly that the token gets duct taped on and, and it's always at like the, the most random times. But yeah, I mean, I agree with uh, Crypto Coffee that uh, how many hexagons have tried projects before and then were able to get airdrops and convert it into uh, whatever cho uh, whatever coin of their choice. But I've heard a lot of hex from the airdrops. It looks like they got a substantial amount too. I've been seeing anywhere between like eight grand to like 30 something grand. So that's, that's great. I'm actually surprised hex price isn't pumping more than what it is. Where are we at? Um... Yeah, we're only at like just under like 1.7 right now, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's staying afloat and Hex does a really good job of staying, staying stable as we've seen. It can bounce between a range for months and months until it takes off. <laughs> um, but I, I think now that we broke out of this uh, point, 1.3 cents, I don't know if we're going to touch it again, but it looks like we're safely above it for now. And uh, the next test will be breaking out of that two penny range, which... Who knows, man? Any day now. I'll do it. I'll I'll make hex break out of the two cent range single handedly if MetaMask will just huh. give me all the money that is owed <laughs> via all my <laughs> all my pre prepped MetaMask airdrop wallets, which means it's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I heard DYDX was supposed to do one. Haven't heard anything about that in probably five months now. So Yeah. I got Who knows? those wallets ready too. <laughs> Yeah, they can come out when you least expect it, though. Like this Ampleforth one, totally out of the blue. You know, who, well, maybe not if you're following the project really, really closely. But who's got time to follow more than like two or three projects? It's hard enough hex and now pulse. It's like, how the hell am I yeah. supposed to juggle all this? Well, and that's what makes uh, dollar cost so uh, so good in the space, right? Because like somehow he managed to manages to dig into all these coins more so than your average person like he gets deep into the community what they're bringing to the table the founders everything and he does it for tens 20s 30 50 coins and like it's it's hard like i i know for me like i can know the ins and outs of hex and know the community and know everything and that's that's a 24 7 job in itself and obviously a lot of other coins aren't as uh in depth as hex is but even if they're a fraction of what hex is it takes a lot especially if you want to look into one two five coins five coins and knowing the ins and outs everything and being as thorough as we are with hex that takes some serious amount of time yeah yeah and uh yeah i like to i'm a more of a one one trick pony as well like i, I do one thing and i just go i zone in on it and like just tunnel yeah <laughs> and uh yeah, I've always kind of been that way. Um, but Hex is really just this this whole ecosystem really within it too. So there's so much you can latch on to, like, you know, uh, courses or, or the app or whatever. And like, you know, I started making a course. So if you're new to crypto and you're just here for the first time, HexPassiveIncome.com, teach you how to get rich and make passive income for financial freedom. But yeah, there's so much else, stuff that you can do, um, you know, within it. And now Pulse Chain, I'm trying to figure out all this game theory and I'm just, it's making my head spin. Um, you know, what is there going to be like a, there's going to be like a, a conversion, some kind of an adoption amplifier where you can potentially change ETH or Bitcoin or X token, uh, or maybe even hex you can convert into pulse potentially in an adoption amplifier. Plus there, there's going to be some kind of a, you know, free airdrop or free claim potentially where there's a mechanism where like, if you hold ETH, you might get a 10,000 to one ratio of pulse token just for holding ETH. And that would be given to everybody just so that they can transact. So they have a starting point um, so that they can actually use gas on the new chain. So I don't know, there, you know, there might be another claim adoption amplifier type mechanism, maybe like a, maybe both, maybe like, a, we'll see in uh, about nine days, eight days. I was about to say, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to adapt your plan when you don't have the, the game theory or all the, essentially the the pathway that's mapped out before us like it, who knows which way we're going to fork off of so it's kind of hard to uh -oh. kind of change yeah see what i did there it's kind of hard to choose your game plan when you don't even know what the what the rules of the game are yet um actually brent can you see if you can uh go to the pulse chain and telegram and pull up uh 
I think Richard still has that message pinned, right? That long, uh, essentially where he's kind of thinking about taking a uh, pulse chain. Not yeah, sure. so totally. I'll pull it up. What, what, uh, what do you guys think? Um, if you hold X's, you think it's Ethereum coffee? No, I mean, X is pretty clearly a, a potential ERC 20 for the sole purpose of converting onto the new chain. It's kind of like what Tron did with their uh, ERC 20 token. They they basically, you know, to pre-sell or like maybe during the adoption amplifier, you would get tokens that would give you rights to claiming the pulse token on the new chain. You mm. know what I mean? So there's no 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 reason for token X to have any value. It's a totally arbitrary token. It's just like a placeholder. Yeah, it's a placeholder yeah. that you would buy. It'd be like a, a new ERC-20 that um, you would be able to convert or bridge. I'm not exactly sure how, but there'd probably be like a burn mechanism where like you send in your tokens to the new chain and it would burn. Get the pulse tokens. And you'd get the get pulse tokens. Yeah. And it'd probably be like a one-to-one -one ratio. Yeah, so if anyone hasn't seen this yet, Richard posts this on the... It's the pin message on the pulse chain right now. And essentially goes over potentially his plans for what he kind of wants to do for uh the new pulse cha chain so yeah there you go Ten thousand x airdropped only to x holders uh doo -doo 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 -doo. i'll yeah. uh, i'll read it out real quick just for for those that are like sure. you know, watching audio only why not real quick so a thought experiment uh, instead of pulse launching empty and forks of successful ethereum projects launching on it and getting rich a uh, pulse Pulse goes live with the entire Ethereum system state, uh, freeing all the Ethereans from the high gas cost of Ethereum, reducing Ethereum's fees by reducing the load on it and rewarding the original developers, for instance, Uniswap. Uh, to save all the Ethereans, the supply of Pulse is 10,000 X and airdrop to only holders of X. Uh, don't worry about X for now. Uh, all the WETH, the wrapped Ethereum ERC-20 token pairs uh, are now Pulse ERC-20 token pairs. This makes it likely that everyone that had uh, any Ethereum will be able to transact with the free Pulse they get. And then it says, uh, last line, uh, what do all the ERC-20 token holders and Pulse holders do? Uh, how many dApps have unwrapped and uh, have uh, working front ends? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a gamble of how many people, you know, come over because it's a better product right away, or maybe they're hesitant to, or maybe there's so much going on in the space. Like uh, Blue Bomb the other day posted just uh, somebody else that's making like Ethereum Lite or something, which is, a, they're also forking Ethereum. But, you know, I, I just feel like Richard can kind of cut through all the corporate bullshit and like not waste time on things that don't matter. And, and just not only get it done faster, but get it done... In a, in a more efficient way, in a more elegant way um, than a lot of these other, like, you know, the Matic network, it's okay, it works, but, you know, the bridging is a pain in the ass and it's neither cheap nor fast or, or nor, you know, when you have to go to L1. Were you going to say something, Molly? Cut you off. No, you didn't cut me off. Sorry, I was cut my roommate off, so I was silencing my mic. Uh, uh, <laughs> I keep hearing uh, someone in the background. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I'm trying to cut in and out, but uh, no, I was I was actually laughing at a uh, T Bird. Was uh, he's like, am I the only non uh, admin in, in Valiant Brands chat? <laughs> Everyone, it's just a stream of just hexagons with all riches. <laughs> you bird. Sorry, bro. Damn, that sucks. No, dude. no, it, it, it's true. I remember Hexo saying that the same thing happened to him. Him when he first started off and like uh yeah at first it was like a slow amount of viewers so it's like all right you know i like you i'll mod you and then and then yeah now it's just turned into a smorgasbord <laughs> but, david uh, says no aussies allowed <laughs> <laughs> your chat is literally all all right yeah i know i was looking at it, i was like damn i do feel bad for t-burn now damn, dude. <laughs> you really trust all these guys uh <laughs> well here's the thing cd individuals I like to, uh, you know, let them have the rope. If they they screw up a little bit, you know, take it. But uh, there's a couple people. That <laughs> he said, take it. <laughs> yeah, there's actually no repercussions whatsoever. Just give them some rope. They take it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Man, a shout out to Matt. He just had a pretty good stream too. So, uh, cheers to you. I'm gonna tweet this bad boy just in case. I I forgot to tweet it. 
There's some people in here. Let's get this party going. Yeah, Maddie just said he raided us. Oh. oh. Awesome. Thanks, Maddie. Good stream. I got to uh, catch some of it before the stream started. So, uh, and I'm looking forward to your future streams too. So I know you got some stuff planned uh, for the the Hexakin Vegas thing and some uh, some good information coming out. So looking forward to that. Yeah, that's actually why we like moved to Thursdays too because. I know Maddie's just got his hex therapy show, which only runs like about like two, maybe three hours tops. So this gives us a little bit more room. Whereas uh, you let the quant gang go, and they're going to go five, six hours, and this is a little bit more spaced out for the hex community. Yeah. So, like, five, six hours, man. Those guys. <laughs> Props. <Dude. laughs> I, I love it, man. Yeah, it's like like Maddie keep... said, like the average is like five hours or something. So. Yeah, they keep the hex machine going they keep the 24-hour streams just you know all day all night there's always somebody mostly after like 5 p.m hours but uh, in the u.s at least but um hex max said who's got a tweet to retweet at coffee uh yeah i got a tweet you can retweet that bad boy hex mac thanks hey hex mac you should also uh put your link in there for the telegram channel you did so uh hex mac came up with this di idea it's called a. Uh, hex flick uh and chill or i think i don't know i'm probably butchering it. sorry <laughs> sorry mac <laughs> but it was fun right like a bunch of us uh i missed the first one where they did the original matrix but we did the second one we did uh matrix reloaded and it was just fun it was me hex mac uh markable thoughts a bunch of uh blaze a bunch of the australians and we all just watched uh we all just watched a movie and it was just a good time right like we were all just shooting the shit just talking kind of making jokes about hex like it was fun and besides the fact that i had to wake up for 5 a.m which uh <laughs> i was like oh i got i got plenty of time i'll watch the movie with the guys then i'll go i'll go work out afterwards no that two hour movie turned into like a four hour movie <laughs> what, what movie was but it? it was but it was a good time matrix reloaded the second matrix movie Great. Oh, so nice. I, I think we're gonna awesome. do the i think we're gonna do the obviously the last one the trilogy here to end up so I don't know if Hex Mac put one uh, one that's going to be up yet. I'll leave that on you, Mac. <sighs> I, I like that. It's it's a cool idea. I mean, yeah, the fact that normally you wouldn't be able to like stream the movies, obviously because of copyright, but the fact that you can do it like in the green room like that and kind of you know shoot the shit without having to worry about it like being broadcasted per se is uh, is pretty cool. So uh, shout out to him for that idea. That that's a great idea. Well, we were even we were even talking about like yeah, it is fun like to do that, but at some point if we ever uh, get our s shit together and like we were <laughs> we were trying it on Zoom, so we had a lot of technical difficulties. But uh, in the future, it might be cool to just record it and then like it's not twenty four seven hex, right? Like it's just us bullshitting about a movie, but like hex gets brought up every now and then, and then we could do something like obviously with copyrights with YouTube, we can't actually display the movie, but we could have people sync up. And there's a lot of channels that do that, where people go and commentate through movies, people sync up, and they just have fun with it. And if Hex gets thrown in there every now and then, or as a joke, people are, it drives their curiosity, right? They're like, what is this Hex, these group of guys that are, and gals that are just talking and just keep bringing it up like where they where where they talk about they're talking about it changing their lives making them more money than they've ever seen and then that draws a whole new audience outside of uh our ecosystem that we're in right now yeah sounds pretty cool um and it's crazy man it's just like you know it's a place to hang out it's uh no matter who you are you know hex is more fun than the other communities like we got people to just chill with and it's not always serious in your face chilling all the coins i mean yeah we shill hex a lot but uh we know hex is world changing you know an innovation that can make you financially free so you know i feel like a lot of times in crypto you get just this this mindless like ta which is it's fine like ta is good but people it's like they're coming back to the they're coming back to get their fix every day they just need their, their little tiny fix right whereas like in hex we've got so many other things to talk about TA is fine. Like TA is great. I, I think there's one guy doing TA right now who's doing a great job. Um, and I, I, I would love if he could keep that up. Actually, I want to shout that dude out. What's his, his name is? Uh, I know who you're talking about. Gerald. Oh, yeah. yeah. The G. I, I was just watching his video earlier. I'll, I'll link it real quick. Yeah, we can uh, hover over because he's. A, I, I forgot he's, to retweet him, but he's, he's very good. good. He needs to get blown up more. He's actually got very good quality videos and uh, very good TA. Yes. It's just G, G Hex, <laughs> Gerard Dog, Gerard Dog. 
Follow at Gerard Dog. Oh, uh, Let's uh, Gera W R Dog. I'll share the screen real quick here. Love new YouTube yeah, coming so, out. You could tell this guy's kind of serious too. Like he, he's he's done he's done YouTube before, so he's already familiar with it, and um, he's good at what he's talking about. So yeah. that's really all. Like content is more important than than production quality. I mean, production quality is important, but uh, if you've got the content, you know, you've got it. I, I agree. I mean, shout out to all the people that that are doing content and, and like Motley mentions with the, uh, the, the hex flicks and chill thing where, where it's, it's not just solely hex. Cause after a while, I think people like, uh, a little bit of spice in their life and they like a, a new change. So to be able to cross promote like that into other, uh, you know, things that people like, uh, then, then yeah, you get more natural organic adoption. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Just, that's right. Just Gerardo. I just put the link in the channel for him to go check him out. But yeah, go check out uh, his TA. I think it's uh, I think it's right up there with like what Wasabi does. So if that's your thing, he's a uh, between him, Wasabi, and or I mean, look into crypto or whales only. Those three guys are on point when it comes to their technical analysis of uh, Hex for sure. Yeah. All I do is talk about onboarding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a good point you bring up. So uh, that that course you made, uh, what, what's it called again? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you guys. Like, I'm I've been trying to figure this out. The question I'm wrestling with in my head is like, who is the ideal persona for a course like Hex Passive Income, or just you know, to market to, right? Because it's got to be specific enough to be like you're talking to a specific person. Um, so so in my head, it's like no coiners and new coiners, right? But like. I guess that's as good as I've got right now. Somebody suggested I, I should like focus more towards uh, my community that I'm already that I already have, meaning like all you guys. But I don't feel like I really need to sell you guys any shit. Like yeah. you guys are already experts, and what 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 can I teach you? You know what, what can I teach you guys? Mo most of you, in a course that you don't already know, right? And that I don't put out for free mm -hmm. in free videos. Yeah, you already taught us everything, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. For free, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How long does yeah, it man. take to walk through, like from like beginning to end? Because you mentioned like it's it's About more of hours. a uh, okay, nice, yeah. nice man. Like five. That's hours. cool. I mean, I think yeah. I mean, we uh, we have Dollar Cost that that does the uh, the crypto course as well, and, and Motley mentions him being able to kind of pick different projects and, and products that uh, that are kind of more researched and whatnot. And and yeah, I got tremendous respect for people that that can provide value, and especially in that kind of form it's uh it's it's super beneficial for the the person that's the teacher because the time's not being wasted you know they're actually listening and then the people that are learning you know yeah i uh i like what children of the grave said brand likes a little spice in his life that's why he has a latina girlfriend <laughs> is, that true? is this true are the allegations true yeah, yeah, she's she's Venezuelan. Venezuelan, yeah. Wow. Venezuelana, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hispanic girls are my favorite. For sure. They're my favorite, but uh, I don't know. Every time <laughs> we got to like relationship level, they turn crazy. So they're they're like fun for the short term, not ideal for the long term. <laughs> I always ran into, but that that was just my personal experience. <laughs> I have a similar experience. With yeah, a, with a nice Colombian gal. Uh, <laughs> Colombians are my favorite. <laughs> they get, they get my number one vote. Uh, but yeah, so I, I I stuck with Asian after that. It was a nice balance. <laughs> yeah. So no, that is my, true. Definitely my white girls more of a there. fiery culture. <laughs> so I know what you mean for sure. But no, with uh, in regards to your course, um, I think I think no coiners and new coiners, like I, I think that's definitely ideal because they're gonna need the more the most help getting in. And like even even not too long ago, one of my guys that I was onboarding, like he he's pretty crypto new and just like just trying to help him get through everything. It's just it's time consuming right now, right? Because we don't have Staker app running efficiently like it should. We don't have you have to figure out, okay, what's the best way to give them on? Am I going to have to give them a Coinbase account, a Gemini account? They have crypto.com. He was having an issue sending his stuff from crypto.com to MetaMask. So like, 
I couldn't really troubleshoot what his error was. He was just getting like a error message via email. So I told me I had to reach out to crypto.com, wait for that to get done. Got that yeah. fixed. And it's it's just a headache. Even even and like if it's someone outside of like a good friend of yours or a family member, it's it's really hard to take the time out of your day. And I'm finding more and more people hitting me up to do so. And I, yeah. I feel like an asshole sometimes, but I just I was just like, Yeah, I was just like, give me some time and like I I don't have much time in the day to do it because it's going to be a multi hour um ordeal just to get them the basics just so they can actually get in. So a course is very helpful for an opportunity like that. It's just, how do you, I don't know, I know you're big into marketing, so it's how do you get your outreach to those individuals that are interested, but don't have the tools to get in? Yeah. Well, I've got a new, uh, new scripts coming out, um, like a new, new pitch sales pitch video. Um, Bran, we got yo, some yo. big news. We got a, we got a screen. Yeah, yeah, let's this is actually huge. I, I can't believe oh, this happened. Thank you, thank you, Identity Sorry. Block. $49,000. Wow. Wow. That's pretty crazy. There we go. And that's it. Let the heads like roll. Yeah, we'll see who's yeah, uh, who really believes in the... <laughs> Let's see who's in it for the technology now. <laughs> I'm in it for the tech, the guys. Sell, sell, yeah. sell. <laughs> I've got another screen to share. Uh, you know, me and Coffee were talking about it, but the parabola, right? Richard's talked yeah. about the parabolic yeah. and... He he kind of kind of predicted it there, and I mean, so far it's yeah below 50k. I mean, there's there's always psychological numbers that people like are like really panicking at, and like the cascade effect of a sell. So who knows? Who knows? Yeah, we I think know we how have one of these extended. Turns. Okay, like this. So if I had to do like a gut total random prediction, right? But like going with my intuition, um, there's echoes of like the second bull market, right? Where there was like this weird over overshot. And then an adjustment period, and then an, another leg of the bull market. Mm -hmm. Whereas like the third and first went in kind of like a one, two, three, four, five wave. Um, I think this one's gonna go like shoot up really far, go down really far, and then slowly go up to its next peak, if that makes sense. Um and I, I think that has to do with just this parabola thing. I think, but I think it's like there's too much going on in this space for this to just be the end of it. You know what I mean? I would find it like there's so, the stars you are aligning. Be, you might be biased, though. <laughs> you know, you, ne you, ne you I know. never know. I know, I know. And, and it's like, of course, I want to say that it's going to keep going. And another thing, too, is if you just extrapolate the lengthening cycles, uh, if it, you know, if every cycle is lengthening, and, and if, if it ended right now, this would be the first cycle that actually was shorter than the previous cycle. No, I. There, I now, there's no law saying that has to happen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I agree. I th I just also realized how much more vested I am in this in this cycle than I was last, and um, so I know there's a little bit of bias uh, biases there. So like I, I I like to look at both both options, and like it it could you know we could be getting close to the end, but no, I I, I agree with the uh, with the latter for sure, and I want the latter to take place, but uh, prepare for both. I guess is what I'm getting at as well, and I and. As much as uh, bear markets suck, I, I truly do think uh, Hex will be a uh, saving grace in the bear market. Yeah. Where, where else can you get 40% to cover your 80, 90% losses everywhere yeah. else in crypto? Dude, you can't. Hex is the perfect coin to be marketed during a bear market. It's literally yeah. bear market resistant. It's like, hey, if the bear market, if your coin drops 40% in a year, but you're staked five years, you break even. You know, if you're holding Bitcoin, you're, you're just losing money. So I think it would be wise of people if they're in altcoins, you know, before the market goes down or, you know, as the market's going down to not only go into US dollar coin, but to go into HEX as well, because assuming that that HEX isn't liquid, right? Like you, you don't want to go into liquid HEX, you want to go into stake HEX um, so that you can keep well, making interest. Well, even uh, Limon, he says, uh, what is HEX's top? It's hard for me to see it go high with these gas fees, to be honest. And, and it's like, yeah, you know, I understand that. Um, and that's kind of why Richard's new Twitter profile header says like forking Ethereum instead of the 40%. Like it's still there, but it's the second uh, according to the the fork. So yeah, I mean, currently we've got higher fees and whatnot, but I think um, even with Ethereum, you kind of got to uh, adapt, right? Because the S-load function keeps, keeps going up. So it's like, okay, well, instead of the shorter stakes with maybe smaller, smaller amounts of hex, maybe change your staking uh, strategy for ethereum and then maybe when pulse comes out maybe you'll uh, you'll change it back to shorter but uh, everyone kind of has their own 
uh, work around with the actual uh, higher fees. It's well, here's the thing. If, if you're Sorry, asking wins the, wins the top, Lamone, like wins the hex top, it's so decorrelated from the rest of the market. That's what you got to realize. It's like the hex top is not there. Like, I'm not calling a top for hex in the next 15 years. I, I mean, there's there's going to be significant dips in hex, but there's going to it's. I think it's going to be in a multi like multi year bull market when you look in the grand scheme of things. Just like Bitcoin is right. Just like Bitcoin, if, if you zoom out, has been in a bull market this decade. If you look at it on the decade level, it's like oh yeah, of course it's going to seem so obvious that you should have bought hex. You know what I mean? Ten years from now, it's going to be like of course, right? So I don't, I don't want to call the hex top at all because not only is it super decorrelated, like we have our own chain now that's going away from Ethereum. And, you know, every every day the market's down, hex is up. Every day the market's up, hex is down. Um, so, I mean, I can call a local hex top or whatever, but I don't think it's going to be correlated with the rest of this crypto market. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, it was cool today that YouTube algos recommended me this, uh, this video of this guy just recording himself watching the... Bitcoin price almost 10 years ago or however long ago it was going up to like a hundred dollars and he was like losing his mind. He's like, guys, this is crazy. Someone just <laughs> sold like sold like uh 300 Bitcoin for a hundred dollars a piece or $110 a piece. He's like, this is nuts. All time highs. We've broken it a couple times today. And he was just, he was just like losing his mind. I was just like, oh, this is cool, right? Like this is kind of, this is, we're not even quite to that point in hex. Like we're, we're pretty much that early on still. And so it's kind of, it's kind of cool like looking back like those, those videos videos will be us uh looking yeah. back back five ten years down the road and just like oh remember those days when hex was under a cent and under two cent and shit remember what was under a quarter 50 cents <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just brings everything back into perspective uh that's such a great idea like if you're ever f like fudding yourself out just go look up some videos from 2015 Shh. or 2014 go look up a uh, world bitcoin network World Bitcoin ne what Network was like what we're doing now, <laughs> except for Bitcoin. Yeah. And yeah. they actually stopped. They like they quit because they were just like, ah, you know, we're rich. Bitcoin, <laughs> we're Bitcoin rich, yeah. we made it. You know, they yeah. like, well, well, let's do something else now. Uh, but they went on for like, I think three or four years. And, um, you know, they, they kept everyone entertained in the world of Bitcoin for a long, long time. And so if you look at their emotions and look at how they're Very feeling similar. about Bitcoin, going up to $50, going up to $100, and then, you know, from today's perspective, it really just it it puts it all in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It's very cool. Yeah. I thought so, it was neat that YouTube recommended me that video today. I was just like, oh, shit. Look, that's us. <laughs> just I'm going to go wait do to that see now. where we are in 10 years. I'm going to go do that. I, I agree with Motley about like, you don't really realize how much something's appreciated until you rewind. And even... Even the coffee's point, the the twenty fifteen with the World Crypto Network. I, I used to watch those guys, and yeah, I thought it was pretty good. But uh, but even with hex, like the the hex twenty twenty rewind, uh, it's cool to see like how far we've uh, come already. And you know, like like he says, let alone three, five, you know, ten years out, Quattro Cinco. So a hell of an eighteen months. 17 yeah, months, almost 18 shout, months. Shout out to Hex, Hex Cadet. If none of you guys have seen that already, uh, he's Hex Cadet, I believe, on Twitter. And he's got a YouTube channel <clears throat> with that video. It's probably the best uh, Hex video that's ever been made, in my opinion. Holy shit. Maddie said World Bitcoin Network is still going. And he went on his show on Twitter. That's amazing. <laughs> dude, Maddie's out here doing work. Damn, dude. <laughs> Maddie's out here showing never, the Bitcoin. Yeah. He found a way into the Bitcoin Maxi Central HQ. We got them all. We got, <laughs> <laughs> we got them all. <laughs> I think, wait, wasn't, because World, World Bitcoin Network was uh, a Bitcoin thing, right? Not World Crypto Network. Yeah, I think it was, it was, a, yeah, it was Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Identity Block said World Crypto Network had eight live viewers today. <laughs> Sad. And see, stuff like that, that like Maddie's doing and I know a lot of hexagons are there's just there's a lot of cool ways that you can continue to promote and get it out there like I know I personally and I've seen it with a lot of other hexagons too. take advantage of everyone bitching about ethereum fees let people just start mm -hmm. knowing now about pulse chain get the get the hype and the eyeballs yeah. and attention on it as you can now just like look Richard Hart I don't know if you've heard of him but he's creating uh he's creating a fork of ethereum with cheaper faster uh transactions and it's going to be better and you might even get an airdrop of your favorite erc20 token how cool would that be to actually yeah. have 
have it on the new pulse chain that has cheaper fees that would be amazing yeah. i mean tell what you can tell them is that chances are you are going to get a copy of whatever yeah. erc20 you own now whether or not it has value is kind of up to your community to portray and you know maybe adjust some front ends but um yeah, you, you got to start the pre-sale. The pre-sale is epic. Like 100%. that's how, that's why that there's a billion dollars of like, or like a like so much over FOMO on day one. Not a billion dollars, but um, for hacks, right? Is because the, the four week, hacks. the four week launch. Uh, you know, the pre-sale almost uh, just the hype was built up so much, um, and I want something similar to happen to, to Pulse too, and it has nothing to do with hacks. So make sure you, you use that talking point. Pulse and hacks have nothing to do with each other. You don't have to buy Pulse to buy Hex. In fact, you probably, you know, can just buy it with Ethereum or you, you'll probably just get airdropped it for holding Ethereum. So um, that's how you guys should be talking about it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's weird. It's like, Talk, I, yeah. I, sorry, I saw that other thing, like that Ethereum Lite project. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, this looks interesting. You know, I saw the team and they just look like their standard ICO group, like making some cool technology, perhaps paying a, a bit too much to, uh, attention to the, you know, to the tech side and not the marketing side. Um, and I'm just wondering why I haven't heard of it. If it's been out for like months, a couple of months, it's like, you think something that's trying to fix Ethereum with low gas fees would be getting a lot more hype. So I guess not. Brennan says it's just I'm, I'm sure. to say Pulse and Hex have nothing to do with each other. Well, that, I mean, that's only if people are anti-Hex and they really don't have anything to do with each other. Like, they're yeah. <laughs> like they don't. They, they, might, they may lead back to each other, but I mean, it's it's intentional, right? And Richard's come out and explained it. It's just like, look, he's going to take a different approach. It doesn't really have to correlate whatsoever. It'll eventually draw more eyeballs to Hex, but it is it is different. It is its own, Actually, own you know entity. What? But yeah, it, well, I guess, okay. So I'll... I'll say i was wrong there because it was created for hex like for hex holders pretty much <laughs> so is, well, that is yeah. nice. I'll, I'll i'll take the yeah. l on that one but at the, I mean, at, Richard... the sa at the same time though if you're copying every erc20 it's just as equally advantageous for everyone else to get on the chain as well and provide yeah. provide a sense of worth for whatever their erc20 is and come transact on the the better chain so i mean everyone well, there's has the also... same opportunity it's just is your community yeah. willing to make the adaptation or not yeah i'm yeah, mostly talking Richard about also, all, the, all the pushback you're going to get from the the haters that they're not cause people are going to for their first reaction is oh richard hart is touching that like he's a scammer you know be realistic about it like people either love richard hart or they think he's a scammer so well that's why it's nice there's no like preferential treatment for the hexagons i mean i agree with brennan's point that yeah, obviously people are probably going to know, yeah, Richard Hart created it. Oh, isn't he the guy that did Hex? But yeah, when you have like a, um, a fork of the system state and you kind of have like that equal opportunity, I guess, with all the other uh, ERC-20s and whatnot, I mean, it is just kind of like a cross promotion that, that isn't just going to uh, benefit Hexagon. So um, that was kind of like an interesting uh, spin and, and twist when he initially kind of proposed that idea. So. Yeah, he's gonna drop the entire system state of Ethereum. So every every coin has a chance to essentially build up their community on the pulse chain. So regardless if it was generated for Hex originally or not, uh, other other ERC twenty tokens can come over and do do their thing as well. So everyone has a level playing ground, and you'll still have people that want to yell scammer or whatever for Richard. But I mean, like I think Brendan mentioned, like who who gives a fuck? Like <laughs> at the end of the day, we. Richard's coming up with the solution where everyone else is just sitting on their hands, even even Ethereum. Like we hear a bunch of stuff coming from Ethereum, but it's always it's always down the road. It's always later. So we're just we're just left here waiting. Whereas Richard is actually building, and we'll have new updates here towards the end of the month. So like I I thoroughly enjoy being in Richard's corner because he actually gets out there, gets his hands dirty, and builds and does what he says. And it's one of the things I value most in people is when you say you're going to do something, do it. I know Gary touches on that all the time. Funding Jim really yeah. harps on that. Like if you're going to say you're, it's cool. If you're saying you're going to do it, just make sure you actually follow through and do it. If you don't do it, then what, what good is your word? So, so Maddie's question, well, first of all, true, true AF. Maddie's question was basically USDC coin, like US dollar coin. How's that going to work when it, when it crosses over? And I was in the chat the other day on Pulse, <laughs> kind of, uh, kind of flooding myself on USDC a little bit because Something tells me that like if 
if Coinbase and JP Morgan hear about like, hey, all of your USDC coin is being copied, um, they might, you know, it might trigger, it might ruffle some feathers, right? Like when you mess with the dollar, people don't tend to like that. Um, you know, there is always the option that potentially they could just shut off USDC coin on the new chain. I, I bet they have some kind of backend uh, switch to flip. I don't really know for sure. Um, Unless but it Richard would be takes really... a hold of that one, as <laughs> because yeah. I think uh, when he when he can't, when though. he huh when he copies them over, I I've heard that you're actually able to um, essentially have the con you have the ability to code in the fact that like you can actually control that that token. I don't know if that's oh, true true or no. not. No, think about it. Like whoever has the private keys for those, you know, admin contracts or whatever, like there's it's still going to be their private keys. Like you don't just get control of everyone else's projects. I don't think that's true. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. I didn't think it made much sense either. But I've heard a couple people uh, parrot that. But I do like uh, Maddie's mention of the USDC because I know a lot of people have speculated on that. It's like, oh, I'll just buy a shit ton of this fucking stable coin that's trading right now at ten cents. <laughs> Richard did mention that there were going to be exceptions to like not everything was going to necessarily be ported over, but who knows, maybe like uh, a few a few exceptions. So so two copy and Motley's point, yeah, who knows that might might ruffle some some wrong feathers. And at the end of the day, Richard's really good about doing his his research on on kind of what what should go and what shouldn't. So they might do like a spin of some sort of stable. Who knows that doesn't directly. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah it's not. It's not like the biggest. It's not like the biggest issue. It's just it's very interesting to talk about like how will how will stable coins work. It would be awesome if we could develop our own algorithm back to stable coin, kind of like Dai, but on Pulse, or maybe just even use Dai on Pulse, right? That'd be cool. Um, but I feel like with the USDC coin, either people are either going to believe in it via like social consensus, or they're going to try to dump it to zero. But it would be really funny to try to buy like USDC coin on Pulse at like a penny, in case it ever comes back, like. I mean, maybe set a limit order there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, there's a lot of opportunity that's going to be on this on this a chain. Lot of a lot of so much opportunity <laughs> to make money in weird ways that you probably won't even be able to predict right now. Yep. Uh, yep. Brennan says, "Do I'm we really excited. care about trying to gain respect from haters?" My answer to that is yes. I, I care about what people think of us. So yes. Um, Maddie says, "I hope people think Pulse is a scam so I can buy cheap and then FOMO our bags to will moon." Yeah, Max. that's that's a, that's a thing that I, I think hexagons do have an advantage of like getting in early because it, it might take some people some time to realize that Pulse is not, you know, it, it's just a better Ethereum or whatever. So like, I don't I don't think we'll have as much time as we did though with Hex, right? So there was so much hatred and scam talk with Hex in the beginning. I think even even now we've seen that kind of narrative led up a little bit to some degree. And I think with how successful Hex is, whether the haters want to admit it or not, like they, they realize that they can see the numbers, they can see the chart. So I guarantee you if Pulse Chain comes out, like Hexkins are very good at shilling it. They will hear about, it. like we were talking about doing the pre-advertising now. And uh, they'll be watching and I guarantee you a lot of them will be uh, getting speculative bags of it as well. And uh, maybe more so than what they did uh, with Hex initially. So <laughs> just definitely, definitely be ready for Pulse to have an explosive uh, launch. I, I have a feeling that it, it'll do quite well. And uh, I'm actually in the process of actually closing on one of my houses right now. So I'm hoping <laughs> I can do a quick sale, get that, uh, get that dry powder, get it wired into uh, crypto yeah. land and uh, be ready to go. That's kind of oh, my yeah. plan. Oh, I'm, I'm aping into Pulse hard. <laughs> I'm aping it. But uh but he here's the thing though is financial advice now, just tape into it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you I'm telling you what I'm doing, and by no means should you ever copy what I do ever uh, because I'm not a financial advisor. But he's an if ape. I learn <laughs> I'm a I'm a ba I'm, I'm one step up from a chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a little bit smarter. Um so what I think about Paul though is you have everything that you learned from the adoption amplifier of Hex. Don't make the same mistakes twice, right? Like don't over FOMO on day one. And if you're thinking, oh, people aren't going to over FOMO on day one anymore because now they learned their lesson. No, they haven't learned their lesson. They're nope. still going to just like it. Just like it. Just like at Coinbase getting released. It was the same. It was the same thing, right? Yeah. Like all the crypto communities, like yeah, Coinbase, and like yeah, pump it, pump it, and then just crash it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's the like, psychology like of of the market, right? And uh, someone kind of said one time back in the day, like that the candlesticks are kind of like the emotions on. Um, on the chart and it really is true i mean people see something going up and they hear it going up and they hear about the gains that are all uh 
like on paper and not necessarily realize. And then, yeah, all it takes is Richard's kind of talked about this with even Bitcoin with the parabola going down that all it takes is like one good punch to the nose for it to like have a cascading effect downward. So that's kind of what happened with the like Coinbase uh, IPO and we see it happen with everything. So I agree. It kind of depends on like how many days because Hex had the 351 day launch phase. But if uh, you kind of just take the days that the thing is worth, then maybe like you said, not the first day. DCC, what are you doing in the chat, dude? <laughs> what are you doing? Fucking trolling. Get in here. It says, it says fucking Californians, man. Give them all the time in the world. And they're just over here. He's probably eating a big old taco right now. Taking his time. <laughs> in California late, coin, time. late coin Moses. Yep. So. Get out of the chat, dude. You got you belong in here. <laughs> Facts. Get out. Identity block says it's a seller's real estate market. I've heard that. I always it's felt like banned. that was something. To, yeah, that's just like banter. Oh, uh, no, no. I was, no, I was saying just ban. Uh, <laughs> ban DC out of the chats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah DC, all you, all you admin, <laughs> all you admins, kick him out. Um, what the fuck, bro? She no, it, agree. it really, it really is a seller's market right now. And um, I was kind of theorizing a little bit of a crash. We might see it towards the end of the year, but like, I don't know, man. Prices are going stupid right now. It really, it really is a seller's market. Um, everything's a bidding war for real estate right now. Prices to build are going through the roof right now with construction costs and material costs. Like everything just continues to go up, 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 up. Dollars getting inflated to shit. Uh, taxes or new tax regulations are getting talked about where people are going to lose 50% of their fucking pay. Like shit's just getting out of control. Yeah. I, I, think that, I think that's all. <laughs> got talk, an ugly though, crash like... coming. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I all talk on the tax side, but it's enough, tax it's side, enough, yeah. fu it's enough FUD to like, um, really cripple the market right like i mean if enough people bite into it you can really destroy the stock market cryptocurrency everything if you can get enough get the scales to tip enough one way and create enough uh fear it can all crash down well yeah it's always good to well. have like a contingency plan right um so yeah as we kind of talked earlier like that, that guns, probably and won't get <laughs> guns and ammo I have some digital oh, yeah. dollars. I, I I sold some Bitcoin. I have some digital dollars as my 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 basically my like reserve, you know, like my backup plan. If this whole crypto thing doesn't work out, uh, if the internet goes down, nah, I, I'm gonna buy a, a cyber truck and just guns. <laughs> if the internet goes down, that's what I'm doing. Um, because then we're all fucked. Just remember, guys, a meteor could hit the earth, and uh, that's it. Just remember that. Just want all of you to remember that. Uh, KC, the house are selling for in 24 to 48 hours with no supply. Interesting. I haven't even thought about purchasing property, uh, yet. Uh, I, I might, I might one day. Trevor, I'm getting a cyber truck. Nice. Me too. I was going to say, speaking of cyber truck, those are badass. Go They're to, so fucking go to, cool. Go to places without state tax. Go to Florida, go to Texas, go to places that are <clears throat> crypto friendly. Yeah. I think Wyoming's a good one. Um, Puerto Rico, obviously, a lot of people talk about that here. Like, there's a lot of ways to use tax advantages to to your advantage. Don't uh, don't pay more than what you need to if you if you have the means to uh, to actually utilize those. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, Texas and Florida are about to get real popular. Even though, for as much shit as we give Florida, it's a pretty nice place in some areas. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> I mean, we get like everyone likes to. Pep. It's like the butt of the joke, but whatever. Big Pep always has like the the grill and chill, and sometimes they'll do like a, a walk and talk too, where he like pans the camera around and sees like all these uh, like doctors' houses or these really nice like beachfront properties, and and yeah, just kind of like in any any place you go, there's there's uh, nicer places and, and less nicer places, and just depending on what you're looking for, I guess. But but yeah, I mean, when you mention uh, less less implication on, on that regard. I mean, yeah, the more you can kind of prepare yourself for stuff like that to happen, uh, the better, you know? Yeah. Sorry, I was getting my buddy set up to buy some hex here in a minute. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, speaking of which, I, I really liked. Uh, I didn't get to say it on stream, but got to say it in the comment. But yeah, your your stream the other day that you had your uh, your few friends that you uh, onboarded. That was pretty cool. You know, it was cool to see like the iteration and like the the other person that you had onboarded teach teach the new person. So that was a good yeah. combo. Yeah, it was fun, right? Like it's uh, it's just a fun little social experiment I kind of wanted to do. Um, those are a couple of my older onboards, so they've been involved in hex long enough to know it fairly well and be in and out of the community to some degree so i had a, another friend of mine that was interested in hex and i wanted to see how well my onboarders did because i know they've onboarded people but i want them to i want to make sure that they're doing a good job describing what hex is and giving them the proper tools so i thought it'd be a fun little social experiment to get everyone on stream and see how how well they did and then interject at some points if they needed help because it's it's funny right because we've been doing this for so long it everything just seems secondhand and it just easy to us and just comes naturally or just some degree but anyone that's even talked on stream they know even if you think you know hex inside and outside when it actually comes to talking about it and just voicing what you know and putting it into words it, you can get tripped up sometimes where you think you know something well enough to explain it but until you actually sit here and try to do it live or do it on stream or do it in person it's a whole nother ball game so it's funny it was funny watching them what's up looking to crypto welcome yeah. what's it, up guys how you doing it was it was funny just watching them uh kind of stumble over the same things a lot of us did early on where like they know they know what they need to say and like they know what what hex does in that aspect but it's hard for them to actually like phrase it where a newcomer might understand so it was it was a fun little social experiment to just kind of bat around with those guys so we had a good time i was talking to them afterwards and we might make it a uh maybe like a bi-monthly kind of thing i think that i find that kind of stuff super valuable just to get the total no coiner or new coiner's opinion but that's just me and i think that that goes for like the shilling of everybody too like you can learn something from from how to onboard and get that elevator pitch down you know, it's as simple or as complex as you want it to be. Hex is a better Bitcoin built on Ethereum. Um, or if they don't know what that is, Hex is a digital CD, blockchain certificate of deposit. Um, Bitcoin is gold. Ethereum Monetize is oil. Monetize your time. Longer yeah, pays Bitcoin. better. That's it. Yeah. And then, you know. Yeah. And then you just it's, hit them up uh, with 40% APY and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> How? <laughs> and then you just I'm go just into saying, the weeds. <laughs> yeah. Crypto with, with product market fit, it's, uh, you know, set over $7 trillion market that we took and replaced and put it on the blockchain. So you have no middlemen. Crypto is about removing middlemen. Uh, Hex Those removes middlemen. There. You become the bank in Hex. And it's great because you get to set your own time frames. more flexibility than the banks. Never closes 24-7 uh you know you set your own you, you make 40 percent apy blah 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 i've fucking i've said it all so many times it's just like bullet points in my head with wasabi how do you get in here before fucking dc when he's over here trolling in the damn chats <laughs> 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 that tool bag <laughs> you got any tacos today man did you make any tacos uh, no 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 tacos i i damn i had a pretty light i had a pretty pretty light dinner so <laughs> I'll no outback you didn't you didn't pig out on outback like i did <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm gonna save it for friday friday i'm nice. gonna eat i'm gonna eat well on friday what are you doing it's friday? Earth Day today guys uh it's Earth just Day. fuck the earth <laughs> oh no, hey. no, no not, nothing special other than it's just being friday so i like fridays friday's your cheat day <laughs> yeah, it, it is I'm I'm good. At, I I'm clean up until Friday. Fridays Dirty I can bolt. eat whatever whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> My kind of day. Mm. I reverse that. I do six days of the week that, and then <laughs> I'll <eat> clean <laughs> one day. <laughs> yeah. uh, no fuck 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 the earth. I'm on the Elon Musk train. We're going to going to go <laughs> re. We're going to have it uh, Mars. Hell we're yeah. all gonna we're gonna all use Doge as our uh, our new currency. Actually, what's the awesome. price? Did they take a nice hit uh, during this? I would assume so. Probably, yeah. By the oh, way, I just added 21 Dogecoin. cents. Oh, God. Yikes. Hope some of you guys Imagine took buying it at 42. Yeah. Oh, some, some, guy bought 40, some guy bought 42 cent Doge out there. Oh, my God. Did, did, it, did, it wake, did it wake up that high at one point? Yeah. I didn't even realize it waked up that high. Damn. Forty. I think 40 cents or something. That's unfortunate. Well, if we get that double uh, double top, then uh, maybe he'll see a dollar if he holds. But people like that usually aren't going to hold to to a dollar. <laughs> They're gonna well, they they probably already sold at a loss at this point. I added Dogecoin as a keyword to the hex ads, and it's been getting a lot of clicks in the past couple of days. 
That's smart. <laughs> so when I you search I... Dogecoin on uh, Google and you see a hex ad, thank you. you're welcome. I still I still hate that uh, people like looking up uh, hex still get uh, routed to a lot of the scam articles that were written in the beginning, a lot of the Ponzi scheme articles and stuff that were originally done. Yeah, I've had a I've had a couple. Well, I found, friends a, that I found a guy that can up. delete those. Oh, I found a guy that can delete those off the internet. How? Really. Sounds that sounds like know. some that sounds like some back work fucking shit there. It's like, yeah, I can I, I can remove oh, that yeah. from the internet. I don't know if I want to do it uh, because it's it's like a reputation management guy, right? But uh, yeah. the way he w- talked about doing it seemed a little black hat, and I don't know if I want to. Like, I'd be happy to pay him for that if I knew it was like not going to cause any repercussions. But it yeah. just sounds a little, yeah. little too risky, and I don't want to cause any more more trouble. By getting in trouble with Reddit or Coin Telegraph or something like that. <laughs> Get rid of it. <laughs> Remove them all. <laughs> Just t- like takes that was- article out back and shoots it. <laughs> She's like, it's done. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a fucking then there's a new article the next day. Mysterious hacker tries to take down all anti hex articles. Is yeah. it Richard Hart? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's actually it's- crypto coffee. <laughs> 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 but uh, god i want to do it so bad like you have no idea how bad i want to do that yeah fuck it's it, just like it. one it's click history. away dude one email it, away. if that's as deep as people dive into it and then they're, they're that turned off that they can't do a more thorough yeah. research then so be it i'm not gonna i'm not gonna actually do it but the, the people possible. that the people that were turned off by that article then proceeded to talk about aping into doge so their feet their fate sealed at that point <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> tried uh, uh, great stream, guys. Great taco, DCC. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yo, well, how was uh, how was your workout, Wasabi? What did you do today? <clears throat> oh, it was good. So we we uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty hard workout. So we did uh, it was a circuit of uh, it was like ten um ten curl ups, ten deadlifts using a one hundred six pounds uh kettlebell. Uh, ten. That's a, that's uh, a big kettlebell. <laughs> yeah. Um, ten. Ten. Uh, uh, it's. I forget what it, it's. You use a you use a TRX, and then you're using basically chest ups. I don't know. If that's the right right name. Yeah. Of the so workout. you got TRX bands, and you're just exactly doing like incline yeah, so, push ups or something. Yeah. So you do ten chest ups, and then uh, ten push ups, and then we did ten reps of that. So a total of four hundred reps across the board. A uh, hundred per each of those. Oh, nice. That'll get Damn, you lightheaded. <laughs> yeah. Don't hurt yourself. How's yeah, the I'll be, I'll be right. <laughs> how's the how's the handle on a hundred you said it was hundred and six pound? It's a random number yeah. kettlebell. How's the <laughs> handle size on that? That's gotta be a girthy a girthy boy yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I pretty much have to grip it around like my entire <laughs> entire wrist or my entire palm wraps around it. Right. So it's uh, it's a, it's it's the biggest kettlebell I've I've seen in person. Yeah, I've never I've seen it that big. <laughs> yeah, the only the only time I've seen bigger kettlebells are on. Yes, like taking the innuendos cr- there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grow up, coffee, grow up. <laughs> I've said nothing. Uh, it's really this whole girthy. Time. Yeah. You got to really. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I literally said nothing. <laughs> this is all you. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's uh it's good workouts i've been i've been training with the with the guy for a lot for the last like seven months now so um this is probably like the best shape i've really ever been in because the different the difference this time around is like the guy's a professional he's been doing this for you know like 30 years so uh the main or probably 20 years but it's still that's still a lot of time like he understands how everything works mechanically so the difference is instead of focusing on just like one aspect of your body we exercise everything like we're not we're not like the guy like that only does like upper body workouts or something like that like he goes into detail why like it's we hit everything we hit upper body we hit core we hit legs um all of it sucks the leg workouts are tough there's there's even a he even got a sled recently. It's this. It's a magnetic resistance sled, and the way it works is basically the harder you push the sled, the more resistance there is. So it can only exponentially get harder. Even as you get better at the sled, it just sucks more and more because of the That's the cool. magnetic resistance. So really good workouts. Like, uh, it's improved a lot of on ice play too. Because whenever I play hockey, 
I can generate speed really fast. Uh, if I'm if I'm uh, if I'm already ahead of somebody, they are not. There's no chance they're going to catch me. Um, it's the the main the main thing that I need to start working on is basically some some more of the crossovers where. Uh, you start to move basically you you go from like left to right left to right those are a lot harder to do because that's like a more uh technical maneuver on the ice but in terms of just speed uh speed and speed and basically just uh mobility stability on the puck like all of that's covered so at this point it's just uh practicing more and then just boosting up uh, some other aspects of the game I'll be in the NHL soon, guys. Don't worry. Uh, I was about to say, like, I'm not I, gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see footage and just of like Wasabi playing freaking ice hockey and just watch him just ripping it on the ice. Like, holy shit, he really is that fast. <laughs> 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 it's a little speeding bullet going back and forth. <laughs> That'd be cool. I have a couple friends growing up that that played hockey, and man, what a tough sport that is. Holy shit, it's definitely underrated as far as as far as that goes, you know, so uh, that's pretty cool. Bet that's kind of fun to, you know, truck people <laughs> mm. on ice, too. I always like sports it's where fun. you can really smack the shit out of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby, wrestling, boxing, jiu-jitsu, MMA. I've always loved contact sports. Hockey was, like, the one that I never really messed mm -hmm. with because it just required a level of coordination that I was just not <laughs> – I didn't acquire at a young enough age. So I was just like, eh. Not gonna be hockey for me. <laughs> I gotta do oh, all that guys. except on little blades of <laughs> on little uh, little blades on my skates. Like, nah, not 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 my thing. Yeah, it, it was. It, it it. I recently I played. Uh, it was the first time I played roller hockey in probably like eight or nine months, and uh, since I since I was just faster on the skates, like. I did not know how to fucking stop on rollerblades. So I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> I don't know if this is a, even a good idea. We, we, the, the, the group that plays roller hockey, they play in a, they play in this playground area. There's a lot of space to move around. So even if you suck at stopping, you can basically make hard cuts. Like you can make a hard cut left or a hard cut right, depending on the direction you're turning uh, to slow down a bit. But if I was playing like on an actual rink, I would not know how to stop on rollerblades anymore. Um, so not that I really play roller hockey that much, but I, I I may have to because of the the moving plans that I have. So if there's no if there's no ice rinks, then uh, roller hockey it is. Bro, let's get, let's let's go to Florida. I was talking to DC about it. Uh, yeah, you know, back when he was in just jerking off right now in a corner. But uh, let's all move to Florida. Mm -hmm all lives relatively close to each other, and then we can just monopolize our time and just make a shit ton of money. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then, if it gets really bad, then we can all just bug out to PR. <laughs> <laughs> Florida, be, Florida, yeah. I, I, well, I can tell you, I'm, I'm making, I'm gonna be headed that way in, in May. So in May, uh, yeah. So I, where, I literally, where in Florida are you going? Uh, so I haven't picked the destination yet because yeah. uh, I'm still gonna take a trip out there and then just find out some possible uh, cities or at least some small beach towns to to stay at. So a lot of it's gonna. A lot, a lot of that I'll know after I take uh, my trip out there uh, next week, and then once I get back, I'll have more information on that. But it's it's really like it sucks because I, I I want to move to North Carolina. I do, yeah. but I think Florida right now is better for. Um, there's there's just some huge perks to live in Florida North, for half the year. North Carolina might turn into the next California yeah. at this rate. So. Yeah, I would think that's... I've heard some good things about North Carolina, and it's, they don't yes. really nobody wants you to know, right? Like they don't want you to find mm -hmm. out. Like the people from Charlotte, they they're, they're like, great. no, no, no. Yeah, they don't want here. they don't <laughs> want more people to move in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with yeah. like a couple places in Idaho. I've heard are pretty nice. Um, I'll pass on the Idaho. <laughs> yeah, not not all the places. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> like try to do that reverse psychology. No, guys, don't cut. Don't come in. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey man, uh, Wyoming is uh, the next crypto state, right? But if, you, if Wy you're, Wyoming is very beautiful, it's just uh, mm -hmm. you really got like rural for me for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm a city yeah. boy. Uh, I I like rural, but I like I like being able to do a kind of a mix. If I if I that's need why to. Puerto Rico seems great. City beach. And mountains, yeah. if you want to mountains, if you yeah. want them. Yep, and that's the that's the thing about Florida too, Wasabi. When you when you get down there, it's just like look at a bunch of different places because Florida Florida is one of those states where 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 geographically where you're located in Florida is very different 
it, from mm-hmm. Southern Florida to Northern Florida to the Panhandle to the Atlantic side to Gulf Coast, like the culture, the the essentially the geographical makeup the people, the money, mm-hmm. everything's just completely different in Florida just based off geographically where you're located. It's cool, though. It gives you a lot of diversity to choose from. So pretty much whatever you want, Florida has mm-hmm. some shape or form of it. Yeah, exa- exactly, Cabana. <laughs> it's probably correct, yeah. <clears throat> That's it that, sucks, that. too, because yeah. I, lo- I love the Carolinas. They're beautiful, and they're and it is booming right now. With uh, They're si- essentially becoming the new Silicon Valley, but with that comes a lot of... Uh, other baggage <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i love how half the show we just talk about what we're gonna like where we're gonna move with our balling out hex games uh, <laughs> like Golden awesome. got, got a place in the carolinas florida <laughs> pr <laughs> yeah I'm, now I'm interested in north carolina you know i was all about austin you know if i had to pick a place in the u.s texas but, you know, every, cool too austin is amazing um also i don't know if i'd ever truly leave chicago because the summer times here are really really awesome but mm-hmm. that's three months of the year. You know what I mean? Three months of the year is the best city ever. I have bad memories of Chicago because I've only been there twice. Once when I was like younger, so I don't remember. I don't remember it too well. And the other time was Navy boot camp. So <laughs> not the not the best best memories of that. Uh, yeah, of that state. You, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, it's all right. I didn't get to see much of it anyway, so I was pretty much in prison during that time. So <laughs> I'm sure it's great. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. Yo, Brandhammer. I love that nickname. Yeah, that's you're you're Brandhammer. That's a good one. Hell yeah, Cabana. Appreciate it. I'm Speaking of which, um, Motley, aren't you joining one of his streams tomorrow? Or is that the next Yeah, his. So. Yeah, good point. Cabana Crypto, everyone has a stream on Friday. Uh, he does it every Friday. It's just a hex happy hour where he'll talk about a lot of, we'll talk about a lot of relative topics. Um, he does this fun little trivia at the kind of midway. And then if we have time, him and Vince will do uh, the joke off. So it's a it's a fun stream, right? And again, it goes back to like what we we're talking about. It doesn't always have to be just all about hex. You can talk about a lot of different things. You can make it you can make it fun and interesting. I, I've I've pretty much showed up on his show most of the times now and started becoming regular because it's just it's a really fun stream. It's entertaining and it's a uh, it's a good thing to kind of round out my my week and my Fridays. And we have a cool guest uh, this week. It's going to be Crypty Girl. So you guys should definitely check that out. It'll be fun. Everyone loves Crypto Girl. She she does a great job. It's on screen for everyone to uh, to look at. So uh, you know, don't I'll, miss I'll, it. Go. I'll post I'll subscribe. post the link if uh, Cabana doesn't beat me to it. But uh, but that's cool. I mean, yeah, I think that'll be the first time she's been on uh, on his stream, and yeah, it's always good to see uh, Big K and Crypto Vents. And I, I agree about the uh, the joke off. I mean, they're they're pretty funny. I mean, some of the jokes, it's like. Man, this is uh, this is quite funny. If you're like moderating, trying not to laugh, I can see how that'd be tough for some of the people that laugh at a lot of stuff, you know. So, oh, uh, I, I think the jokes are awful. I almost never laugh at the jokes, but Vince's grunts <laughs> kill me. Like I would lose to Vince every time because his <laughs> his comedic grunts just like cripple me every time. <laughs> his grunts are pretty funny. <laughs> I would definitely lose to Vince every time because of those damn grunts. But uh. Uh, special request, Cabana. I would love to do uh, kind of an animal animal planet style trivia. I know Vince and I were requesting that last time. Something besides freaking pop culture that I suck at. Thank you. Just saying. <clears throat> Let's see. Pop culture. Yeah, I mean, we did we did music last week because I mean we had uh, DJ Cryptomatic for you guys that don't know. He's a DJ that does a lot of uh, hexagon streams and music mix-ups he does it all on twitch so definitely go check him out follow him on twitter but uh we had him on and freddie quotes so <laughs> cabana did a music theme tri- oh, trivia and okay. everyone failed miserably besides freddie even dj cryptomatic got out all of us got out in the first round except for freddie <laughs> so freddie won pretty Damn. pretty handedly yeah it was, it was pretty bad <laughs> Hey, well, I'll look into crypto. Um, quick question. So uh, do you think as far as like where, where you know, Bitcoin's at right now? I mean, someone was saying earlier that the, the I mean, coffee even kind of showed that, that it would drop below 50K and whatnot. Uh, what are you thinking? And I know you're kind of more of a chart guy and whatnot. Like, uh, what are you thinking as far as the, uh, you know, just cool down or any any thoughts on that? 
Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah <laughs> chart guy. You got any chart great guy. golden <laughs> charts? Chart <laughs> guys? Uh, <laughs> question, Wasabi. Uh, when are all my bags going to pump? <laughs> Tell, Tell us all those chart. magical points on the golden chart, chart yeah. guy. Well, the the, go the golden chart is uh, that that is stored away in a lockbox forever. <laughs> um, but as far as the market itself, uh, there's a lot of speculation right now. Uh, this is this isn't even just for cryptocurrency, but uh, a lot of tech stocks today got hit hard pretty recently. Crypto obviously got hit pretty hard. Um, Ethereum looks very strong relative to Bitcoin. The ETH to Bitcoin pair looks very good. Uh, there, there's a, there's definitely a trend change that's pretty bullish for Ethereum versus that pair. Uh, but as far as the <clears throat> the entire market itself, there's a lot of speculation with tax hikes in the U.S that uh, led to a pretty big sell-off in at least the equities market. <clears throat> and then uh, a lot of guys that are in equities also dabble in cryptocurrency. And uh, there's a lot of people that are not, uh, well, I shouldn't say really a lot of people, but the, there's a lot of uh, fair weather holders, I should say, in the, in the crypto market equities too that um, end up dumping anytime there's any kind of negativity. So uh, I would say a lot of the, for both cryptocurrency and stocks mm -hmm. recently, a lot of this, is basically being fueled by uh, the speculation around tax heights and then just what Janet Yellen said recently about cryptocurrency. Now, uh, in reality, regardless of what Janet Yellen thinks, like it doesn't, like her opinion doesn't matter, but it can have uh, an impact on, on lower timeframes, which if you're holding, it really does not matter. Um, so that's that's what I think, at least in the short term. Uh, I think if there's a cool down in stocks, we'll probably see a cool down uh, in crypto as well, but that doesn't necessarily uh, translate the same on the hex to USDC pair because um, that one is a little bit more decoupled from the rest of the market. Uh, hex has right. held up uh, much better today, for example, relative to the rest of the market, and a lot of that is because the coins are being staked. There's really not much uh, selling pressure aside from maybe stakes that are coming out over the next uh, couple months, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, if we do see a cool down in the crypto market, that does not necessarily mean you will have the same kind of cool down on the hex to USD pair. Now, I'm not I'm not saying like there's necessarily going to be a, a like a huge pump in that timeline. It can certainly happen, but the idea is uh, the con the consolidation on the hex chart has been going on for a longer period of time. So there's just a higher chance that you have uh, you're you're going to hit a, a trend reversal at some point and. Uh, what a lot of people speculate on is when that trend reversal is going to come. So there's there's an entire market for that on TradingView. They they draw like an arrow, like a line pointing up, <laughs> or if they think it's going down, they'll draw an arrow pointing down. Uh, but the reality is like the the actual breakout itself, like you cannot unless you get super lucky. There's no price oracle for. Um, charting like an exact breakout when it's going to happen. I just look at it from the macro perspective, and to me. The weekly hex the usd chart um is still there and it to me it looks decoupled from what the rest of the market is doing which was very red today um like i think a lot of coins probably fell you know 20 percent or something like that so i think for now um any kind of uh any kind of uh speculation with you know assets and stuff it's all short term because the other part of the game is supposedly if the taxes get more extreme for wealthier individuals that does not change what's going to happen over the long term because the reality is like long term holders. The idea is that you basically never sell. You should never be completely selling out of your best assets. So ultimately, these types of moves end up shaking out uh, more fair weather investors that ultimately end up buying back higher because they they don't have they they don't have like the long term mindset of holding coins for multiple years on end. Like you really, I'm just going to tell you now, like everybody should take profits during this bull market. Like I'm not saying not to take profits. You absolutely should, but it's also extremely stupid to completely sell out of your positions, which is what is happening right now with um, like in the stock market and perhaps to some, some, some extent in crypto. So uh, the only way, if, if you do get tax sites on the wealthy, the only way you can protect on that is basically never selling or if you take profits at a later point in time you you take profits so you you hit a you hit a lower tax bracket you don't cash out um a million usd or something like that you you use what is 
uh, you you take what the tax system specifies and then you route around that legally so that you're 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 maximizing potential or in the future there's there's also going to be other ways where uh, you don't actually have to sell your crypto assets to to make further gains on it there's going to be alternatives like ways to to work around that with defi in the future um, shopping.io you, you can buy stuff on amazon from shopping.io if you want to just like buy mm, purchase okay. like every day yeah. Purchase. but there, yeah like i'm sure there will be much much more elegant solutions in, and stuff in the future mm, kind of, yeah, I mean, shit, people are probably gonna, just like real estate for crypto you know real buy, real i'm gonna buy great, some actually. like grail grail watches <laughs> yeah. with uh crypto yeah <laughs> buy a couple really? of rolexes with it <laughs> i actually think investing in real estate over the next couple of years aside from holding like there's really only two asset classes i take seriously it's real estate yep. and cryptocurrency uh Agreed. cryptocurrency of the majority because it's going to make bigger gains but it's also it's also a good idea to have a, a strong base in the real estate because if you're in the real estate market and let's say you own property, there's uh, there's certain tax benefits with like kind exchanges from yeah. one real estate property to another, and you can make big moves doing that over periods of time in real estate. So personally, I I am going to buy, like I am going to enter the real estate market uh, this year, uh, and that's just going to be a base that I hold on to because there's huge tax benefits to that. So. Yes. That's awesome, dude. I'm very curious to hear how that goes because I want to learn about that myself. But I have, I have another question for you that I'm hoping you can mm -hmm. answer. Sure. Um, and I, I think, like, I don't know why I keep forgetting this, but um, when you have long-term, let's say you cash out a hex stake that was two years long and you pay mm -hmm. long-term capital gains on it. Mm -hmm. um, do you, And let's say you're not working at all. Do you then also have to pay uh, in whatever income tax bracket those gains put you in? That's a, that's a, yeah, that's a really good uh, question. So uh, I believe that the way it generally works and, and uh, is when you, let's say, have a stake that comes out, and let's just say hypothetically you're not employed anywhere. Uh, so theoretically, your income for that year is just what you pull out from that stake. And then that would put you in uh, some kind of actually no that's a good that's a good question i'm gonna i'm not gonna answer that one because i could be providing yeah. bad information to that that's a right. very good question though let's say i pull out you know uh a hundred thousand dollar stake yeah and you know i just want that as like to to live on for a little for a, like a year or two and mm -hmm. um you know i i pay my 15 percent capital gains so i get eighty five thousand dollars but yeah now that i have that eighty five thousand dollars does that contribute towards like mm -hmm. do i then have to pay income tax on that yeah, you know, that's, that's, like, that's, that's the question. Brandon, yeah, that's throw, throw up big I, Vanessa's uh, statement. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, I would I would think no in that scenario, but I could be I could be wrong on that. Uh, I do know somebody that actually has that knows how that works. In fact, uh, one of my friends from uh, the East Coast, he's he's very well versed on taxes. Like he's a certified CPA. Uh, so he would actually know like the the specific answers to that to that specific question. Uh, so uh, I could actually link you up with with him if you're interested. Um, like yeah. in the green room, I can send you his contact details because he sure. he's he knows a lot with with taxes. For, so uh, I, I talked to an, I talked to a tax guy just today actually about becoming yeah. you know but never mind we'll talk in the green room. Yeah, did yeah. You, did you mention hex to him? Did you confuse the shit out of him or? <laughs> no, I didn't get a chance to. Oh geez, mm -hmm. good luck. <laughs> most most CPAs are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because crypto is one thing, and then you just bring in the complexity of hex, and it's just like, yeah, they short circuit. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, that, there's uh, there's because even if you look at hex, for example, I mean, there's not there's not really any specific uh, guidelines that it, to the extent that hex operates because technically when you stake your coins you're burnt you're burning everything so hypothetically if you do have a stake come out uh so you mint your coins theoretically you have like a tax event that occurs when you mint your coins but then if you burn them by restaking the coins that technically and they're gone <laughs> yeah no but it's like it, that's the whole thing like if if, if you never if theoretically to, from my viewpoint like if there's no there's not like it's not like you're you're bypassing taxes or anything like yeah. that. You're just you're just not selling. Like it's the yeah. same thing. Well, where here, you... Here's something I found on Google. Uh, yeah. First of all, hey Crypty, what's up? Great to see you. Um, here's something I found on uh, Google when I Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> you're right there, bud. <laughs> capital gains tax. Capital gains are profits from uh, taxable income, but they're not included in 
as taxable income. Sorry, that's not, that came out Jesus totally. <laughs> Molly, I doubt you could read any better. I Googled um, on the Google machine that, go- <laughs> that I found on Google. <laughs> Check this out. Are long-term capital gains considered income? Capital gains are generally included in taxable income, but in most cases are taxed at a lower rate and capital gains and losses are classified as a long-term asset. Um, so yes, they are included in taxable income. Yay. Yes. Yay, we get to pay more taxes. Sweet. <laughs> uh, no. I'm going to Puerto Rico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fuck identity yeah. block says no double taxes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know Identity Block knows his taxes pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, the, the main thing with, with tax is the whole, there's the whole burn-in mince function with the with the staking, but it, for in, in reality, every time you stake, you're burning your coins, so it, it all depends on how like you set up your staking ladder, because technically, if you mince your coins, let's say today, and then you automatically stake them for another 15 years, there's I mean, the, like, the, <laughs> it's like a magic trick for the IRS. It's just like you see these yeah. assets and they're gone. <laughs> I mean, it's it's true though because mathematically yeah. they're they're gone. It's a it's a burn function that there's no there's no value that's there anymore. It just it doesn't exist. It's in it's inside of a stake. So yeah. uh, it only becomes a problem where if you if you let's say at at a, at a certain point, like theoretically, when you move it into another, if you like let's say you have a 15 year state coming out and you move it into another asset class, then you're going to pay some kind of like exit tax, so to say, to get, to get from hex to like USD, uh, Coinbase records, all that stuff. So if it's, a, if okay. it's a lot of money, then well, you're going to, you're get, you get taxed at some point, basically. I have some more clarity on that one because I, yeah. I've, I've Googled it a little further. Um, yeah. this is from tax policy center.org. They sound pretty official. They got a dot org. Uh, capital gains and losses are classified as a long-term asset if they're held for more than one year and short-term if they're held for less than one year. Uh, short-term capital gains are taxed as ordinary income up to the 37% tax bracket, which is okay. I mean, it's good. It's not 40%. It's not great. Long-term gains are taxed at lower rates up to 20%. So your long-term gains after long-term gains tax are taxable income, but only up to the 20% bracket, I believe. Mm. Only only up to a twenty percent bracket, as opposed to like the regular income tax brackets, which could be as high as forty two percent. Yeah, a lot mm. of guys in the chat are touching touching on this stuff. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. I mean, I, I could be butchering this. Cause I'm not an expert, but uh, it sounds like yes, but it's not as bad. This this is why it's advantageous to pay people that are knowledgeable in, in these fields. Like everyone can't know everything, right? So like, there's there's a whole there's a whole strategy behind surrounding yourself around a team of individuals that are very successful in their select niches. Like just like uh, looking to crypto was saying, he he's got a friend that's very well versed in taxes and he's a certified CPA. It's, sometimes it's very beneficial to pay people that are much more knowledgeable than you in a space. Just like DCC yeah. in his course or your course, it's you you pay for stuff that you might be lacking knowledge and you don't necessarily have the time or. Yeah. Um, money to dedicate into it, have someone else cover How that crazy is that, though? That that's we have a system where, like, you you're, you can make a living based on helping other people not get arrested by the IRS. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, you can yeah. make your living on basically pay, on helping people pay off the the thugs that try to rob them. Yeah, that's just my two. I mean, I mean, it's taxes. Yeah, yeah they the, go to the, the road. We need roads. We need. Yeah, I get it, guys. The, I get the it. The fact that it's not clear enough where like everyone could just be able to do it on their own is just. Uh, yeah, it's, it seems like almost borderline criminal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have a whole class of individuals to just actually do the process for everyone because it's that convoluted and that complicated. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's only going to get worse too with. Uh, <laughs> with younger investors that are in crypto because um you know you you have a you have a boomer financial system and then you have millennials and gen z that are entering so uh there's there's a there's a, if you're better off it, it goes back to the whole thing motley was saying is uh time is important and if you're holding lots of lots of money in this market and you want to preserve that over a long period of time uh talking to a speaking to a professional is that 
knows cryptocurrency is is going to be your best strategy. It just it just is like it's like what you do. It's yeah. like yeah, we stream every now and then. <laughs> That's about it. Except for dollar cost yeah, because he keeps disappearing. Yeah, I mean, um, that's a that's a cool thing about an LLC though. I do have an LLC set up, and um, I'm I do really enjoy the fact that every all the money I make, I can just deduct from those profits everything that I buy that's like tangentially related, even a little bit, right? If I want to buy a new computer, well, technically I'm using that computer to make better video quality uh, mm. for for all you guys that you know, oh, no. and that's my business. Oh, so I can oh, shit, basically, if you get like two thousand dollars of profit you can write off two thousand dollars on a computer and it's like you didn't make any money according to the government um so like you can write off a lot of things it, you can write off all the uh the hex meetups that we go to as, you know, i mean they're, they're business meetups right we talk we talk business um expense that, your meals that, stuff like that, that stuff's available to you and like real estate too if you don't even have your own business if you have rental real estate all pretty much everything is like deductible right you can find a way to deduct it any sort of repairs maintenance even if you have a vehicle that you, let's say that you just you use strictly for going to and from your rental properties you can take mileage off that like there's there's so many tax advantages between businesses and real estate it's it's it opens up your eyes to a whole nother world that you don't realize is there it's the it's the individuals that just are just salary salary based or punch that time clock nine to five. They're the ones that are absolutely destroyed when it comes oh, to taxes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's me. Yeah, it's a lot of us on the stream right Internet now. Internet lurker told me to stop talking. Mm -hmm. I'll stop that. <laughs> uh, but no, it's uh, it's true though, right? Because uh, I didn't realize it until I started doing real estate, and then. I, I learned about all these things. I could, I was like, I can deduct that. I can deduct that. Like, are you serious? And like, I can literally place myself in entire new tax brackets just based off the expenses I had. And I can just, I can use all that towards, um, just because I have rental property and I don't even, I don't even need an LLC for that kind of stuff. So it's a, uh, it's pretty crazy what you can do. It's really just the nine to five workers that get absolutely screwed when it comes to taxes. It's, yeah. it's, it's just not the way to get out of the rat race. Yeah, it's a it's a system basically of uh you have elites and serfs and you have elite yep. serfs and then you have the wealthy that know how to uh legally take advantage of uh or legally basically work around the tax system because that's that's the whole yep. thing. Like the the idea with the serfs is they're constantly they're constantly getting fucked by taxes. Um and then the wealthy know they, they have an understanding of what the tax rules are or they know somebody else that does. And then uh, they don't sell their their hardest assets. So selling your hardest assets is really stupid, um, unless you're, you're unless you you're perhaps moving a percentage of it into like another asset, like real estate or something like that, because you want exposure to another asset class. But if you're um, if you're just selling your you know things like your ETH, your Hex, uh, your Bitcoin into into stuff and buying stuff like cars, like that's I'm sorry, that's stupid. So stupid. Like, <laughs> it's so dumb, especially especially now. Like, um, the, this bull run is going to be going on for a lot longer than many people are expecting. So that's what Even I was it, talking about yeah. earlier too. I, I think it's going to be extended, and um, just for the reason that the lengthening cycles seem to be lengthening. Like if it, yeah. I, I mean, there's not there's no law saying that it's it has to keep going that way. Mm -hmm. um but that's what everyone's thinking and i think it's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy just by the expectation of like the hive mind of the internet mm -hmm. yeah it's uh yeah. <laughs> it's gonna a lot of us have a great opportunity right now to essentially create life cha uh, life changing wealth like during this one cycle yeah. like if you if you play the cycle right like you guys are going to be set up for a long time. Like I, I think by the end of this year, a lot of us won't have to work for a very long time if you don't want to. And I think uh, it's going to be interesting. I know I'm applying for a new job when I get out of the Navy. I'll have my final set of interviews in, uh, in July. But I mean, shit, if some of this goes the way we think it's going to go, like I might just take a hiatus for a while and focus on other things, focus on this, focus on just getting the outreach community and I, that's when hexagons become dangerous, right? Like when, when they have a shit ton of money to actually at their disposal and they free up their time. And that's the name of the game, right? It's just freeing up your time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know about dangerous. I like to think of it more as like, that's when dangerous. we become benevolent. <laughs> We're the I benevolent like overlords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we'll, we'll be recreating the future on, on our own terms. It's going to be great. 
Delusional, maybe. Yeah. Possible, yes. Yeah. I mean, everyone <clears throat> thought uh, Bitcoin was uh, crazy in the beginning. Same thing with Ethereum. And now, now it's our turn. Yeah. During Coiners, potentially one of the longest cycles. Can't buy Hex right now. Could, so many people who can't buy Hex right now could still benefit from this community. Time to expand the brand. I'm all about expanding the brand, Empty Coiner. Like, Try let's it. expand as far as we can. Um, you know, I'm marketing my course to people that are not even, it's meant for people that are not even in crypto or like barely in crypto, just new to it. Um, I see all kinds of creative things happening. I, I see people stamping dollar bills with hex.com on it. I see people printing staker QR code stickers, putting them in bathroom stalls, putting them in elevators. Um, Me. I see people with Lamborghinis <laughs> with hex Everywhere. license plates. A Lamborghini with a hex license plate is the best marketing campaign you could ask for. Um, you know what I haven't seen yet? I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that hex billboard yet. It'd be really cool if somebody bought a hex I made, billboard. I, I did some. I did. Uh, I did that billboard. early on. Yeah, yeah. I, I did. Uh, I did. Uh, so there's a lot of there's a couple different digital billboard companies. So you could buy. So you can create. Just figure out what the dimensions are, and you can create your own advertisement. So I had a couple. I commissioned a couple community members to uh, build me some hex uh, billboard designs, and then I. I, you can choose what times you want them to come up and for how long. And so, like, I did that for like uh, the beginning of the beginning of the adoption amplifier. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I didn't even realize that. They, also, they Jay, it didn't work very well. They, but the, don't underestimate the power of the bathroom stall sticker, bro. Bro, I know, I I know you'll be. Everywhere. I know you'll be in there shitting. I know you'll be shitting Who, in there. Who said that? <laughs> taking, that's what I, bro. I in twenty I, minutes. I put hex stickers in all the bathroom stalls. That is, I think, in my honest opinion, I think that's like the best place to put them because if you see a random QR code and like hex or whatever, and you're like, what the heck is that? And you're just sitting there taking a shit, you're, you're going to scan it. You're going to, you got your phone in your hand. You got nothing yep. to do. You're yep. scrolling through Instagram, whatever you're scrolling through. I don't <laughs> and know. You got this I'm beautiful yeah. hex colored sticker staring you in the face, like, I wonder what that is. And just. You know, <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Somebody was telling a story about how he was at a conference and he put QR code stickers over all the all the uh, bathroom stalls and he actually got a lot of like new business for his personal company out of it. Yep. I forgot who told that story, but I was like, wow. Uh, that, yeah, that I remember works. that. I've done it at airports. I've done it at hospitals, uh, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Sorry if I said anything incriminating on stream, but all I said, I was going to expense a computer for work. <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, that's I'm going to do that. Like, I think that's totally legal. I, oh, no, I, de it, it I, is. I definitely, yeah. I've definitely done that before, too. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's <laughs> just telling you to be, be careful about it. But I mean, oh, yeah. Totally, yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to like expense my everything on, you know, business. But you can, you can literally like, so like for my real estate and stuff, like I can, uh, my office space, I can expense out just because this is where I do all my, all my financial dealings, all my real estate dealings. And so like, I can mm. I can tax right off my computer, my office chair, my desk, everything. Like yeah. it's all perfectly legal and legit to do. Yeah. Faceless is tired of our bullshit. They want to hear from the man himself. Show me some show me some chart porn. All Did right. We'll, we'll, we'll not the golden chart, but you can see some regular generic yeah, not, charts. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Through. Can I return my Lambo? Yeah. He Hex Mac uh, brought up the point about uh, us turning into an NFT wasabi. Yeah. <laughs> like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> we'll release uh, it at the end of the year if it comes to fruition. Yeah. yeah. I'll pull up the I'll pull up the, the chart here. So then we can uh what was it? Someone said something. I even, I even have my my uh, my circles on here from before when I was looking at it, so nice. it's already <laughs> all right. It's already right, pressed. Let's share screen. Uh, let's look at. Oh yeah, the comment I wanted to make earlier is J JFK when we're talking about like benevolent or dangerous hexagons, and JFK was like benevolent piranhas. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that sums it up. Okay, so uh, I would say with the with where hex is at right now this move over here looks to me very similar to this over here so this is basically just a, an expanded version of that which makes sense because as the price goes higher uh, it should theoretically take longer for the price yeah. rice to go into the next expansion wave uh, but so far everything looks pretty good um, the major moving averages like the blue line 
the blue line and the orange line, it, the price is, has held above these lines for the longest length of time since uh actually let's 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 find out exactly so it's been above the this blue moving average now for 120 days so that's uh that's four months that's a lot of time and the last time we've been above this blue line for this that length of time i i don't know if you re can really count the the run up here because the blue moving average just began on the chart uh going into that run up but this length of time here is substantial like that's a lot of time for the price to hold above that level uh so and then if we go to the weekly chart this also looks really good too because it right now it just it just looks like the the price is just retesting its previous high and building that up as support which that's something i would not take lightly that's super bullish yeah. actually uh you may get you may get wicks like you can get the price to to, to, to go back in but um i think it's just going to keep wicking up and holds uh pretty steadily at this level there's really not much uh stakes that are coming out in my opinion and then if we just put like a, a trend line we put a random line on the chart love uh, random it's, lines it's holding this trend line quite well so uh, the thing, the thing, the where a lot of traders get caught up, just in general in markets, is the the problem they run into is they're speculating when they think it's going to the exact timing when it's going to pull back up. But the reality is like the markets, the markets very dynamic. Um, oftentimes, when you have uh, traders speculating, they get they get shaken out before the actual move occurs. So <clears throat> this could basically print a couple weekly candles before actually starting to have a big move up but i i do think this move is going to come uh and i think it's gonna be pretty powerful when it does uh, another good another good website to check out is uh charts.cointrader.pro and similarly if we look at the hex to usd chart on coin trader and let's look at the weekly chart here i do have one thing to say though i don't know how legit that uh two cent spike was on january first like i don't know if we should take that as a serious <laughs> sure. support like I think the real yeah. support's a little bit underneath it because that was yeah, one guy. I think I think trying to manipulate it. So I think the real support's at like one point seven ish. Yeah, you know what I mean? that was a fun. That was a fun New Year's though. <laughs> it was. It did make my New Year's a lot of fun. <laughs> that was really fun. So yeah, shout out to that Crazy. guy. <laughs> it, yeah, that's fair. Even even with that in mind, uh, it's still it's still building up the support above that level. But I I agree. You could you could uh, you could prune down the target if. Uh, if the if the market was moved by by one player at the time, but I mean that just shows like if this was one person that did this move, that just shows how pumpable the price on the hex chart is. And uh, at a certain point, I mean everything is it's accumulation, and then you have redistribution after you have another big price rise. So you get a huge pump. There's going to be selling. Um, you'll get another <laughs> distribution, and then the the kind of the cycle starts starts up again uh but this length of time here the the accumulation range uh most people don't make it through um they just don't so uh when this price rise finally does happen it's going to be substantial like it's uh it's going to be pretty life-changing when you look at your staker app one day in my opinion i think that is going to play out um I'm trying to think how, how how far to go on this without giving away my without giving away the golden chart. Don't do it. Don't All do right. it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, you're just gonna look at your staker app one day and just multiples of X, and you're just gonna be that like, "What the, the heck just happened?" Real nicely. What moving it average is, is that? Twenty. Uh, this, this one. This one here. The fifty. The blue. Yeah, the green uh, one. Oh, the green one. Um, or my my I, I might be colorblind right now. You're not you're not referring to this like this He's blue sign one. one the blue oh, one. The blue one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a teal. It's a teal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are both right. Little, little it, it's color. actually it's you actually even more. It's, oh, welcome it's back, this, bud. It's this, it's it's a seven day uh, it's a seven day moving average. So it's even it's even more bullish because this is uh, it's harder to to uh, keep. Uh, lower moving at or lower number moving averages as support. So if you look at uh, this is actually pretty crazy how similar this is, but this to me here, so it's similar. pretty similar to this here. So 
at a certain point, I really think this is going to be like fireworks and just go, well, not fire. I think it's just going to go atomic. I think it's just going to be like a nuclear, nuclear bomb, bomb that goes bomb. Maybe a hydrogen yeah. bomb. Yeah. <laughs> could be. Uh, it could go, I mean, the hex price could go really high this cycle. I, I don't think many people realize how. I, I, it, well, you know it what the sad thing is, happen- dude? The sad thing is, no one's going to want to buy it until it's already pumped. Yeah, Everyone's it'll be like glor- up glorious, here. Glorious. It'll be up here, and then people will start buying it, and then it'll go <laughs> down, and then they'll call it. They'll it's going to be awful, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. going to be so bad. <laughs> yeah. Just wiping uh, my tears with a $100 bill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We tried to tell you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, did somebody buy the top and get wrecked? Uh, oh. Yeah. And the, the other chart, I think, is going to go... Well, th- this one's going to be... Uh, it's a little bit harder to predict the, the price targets on this, but uh, I do think at some point the hex to ETH pair is going to break out as well. Oh, yeah. Um, That's what those charts do. They basically just look like flat lines that spike yeah. up, like all the hex ETH charts mm-hmm. um, look pretty similar. Yeah, it's it's uh it's it's hard to know exact what what's what's really interesting is the the downside potential. The the these like these types of chart patterns generally end up with like very big breakouts, like these wedge patterns eventually mm. tend to like break up really powerful. But yeah. it's 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 hard to know exactly what level this can go, like how high it can go, because the only data points that exist uh in terms of what you can consider quote unquote like overvalued would be these levels here, but it's still so young in in the cycle for hex that we don't actually have enough. Uh, we don't. There's just isn't enough data that exists that you can say what's well, you know overvalued or undervalued. This, Let me ask you this: we we we're pretty sure about ETH pumping, pretty sure about hex yeah. pumping, but but what comes first, right? Does ETH pump come first and then make this graph go down? Yeah. Or I think that's more uh, likely, right? I think that's more likely in the short term. It's, I, I'd say for the short term that that is more likely. But I would not, I would not tri- like for anybody that's thinking of trying to like trade versus it. I would not, I would not try to do that because you can lose your coins really fast. Uh, the hex to USD pair has been consolidating at the, like this is really bullish here. Like if you look at this chart here on the seven day moving average. Um, I would say, it, you know what? I'm going to say it's a crapshoot. Hex could honestly go off sooner than ETH. ETH is really strong right now. I think both are going to do pretty well. Uh, so it's it's hard to kind of speculate which one is more likely to pump first because Hex is starting to build up. Um, this level here is some kind of support. And then generally, this does lead to a huge, uh, huge breakout. But we're kind of seeing the same thing on uh, ETH to Bitcoin. Like if we go to the... The ETH chart. The main thing is the the ETH to Bitcoin pair is very bullish. Um, this is actually pretty substantial, and this is this is actually good for the entire altcoin market because Ethereum broke out above. Actually, let's go to the Poloniex chart. Has the entire data? Yeah. So Ethereum to Bitcoin has broken above this orange line here. So. I think basically all the FUD narratives, like even though the gas fees are high as fuck on Ethereum, it does not matter. Uh, ultimately, it's there's a lot of economic mass that runs the show, and there was a lot of FUD on Ethereum at this price level here, and since then it's risen. Uh, even even at the current price, it's it's risen fifty percent versus Bitcoin, and it's broken out above this orange line. So I think there's a high possibility that Ethereum basically fucks up Bitcoin for uh, the second half of the bull market. The other uh, the other chart that's showing uh, that's really favorable for altcoins in general is Bitcoin dominance. This oh, yeah. is starting to break down massively. So uh, yeah. a lot of that money is going to flow into the altcoin down. market. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, the right there. yeah, the the <laughs> price can go. The price can go really high, guys. Like it's it's pretty indeterministic once you get into the price discovery. I think it's going to go really high. I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah.